Thank you so much for joining today again in Side by Side. And we are going to be thinking of chapter 6 and 7 from verse 24 of chapter 6 through to the end of chapter 7. Now I'll just let you read that all yourself in time and read it, read it quite slowly. And it presents to us this picture of enticement and seduction and the danger. Before I read any from there, let me read from James chapter 1 and verse 16. Um, let me read verse 14. First of all, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is or has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. That's quite clear. It gives us the narrative of the progress of sin in our hearts and lives. Then when we come back to Proverbs, we see this really told for us in a clear narrative about a young man who finds himself drawn into the clutches of a woman who's very much seducing him. And we see the end result of that is his, well, it's described as her bedroom is the den of death. Her house is the road to the grave. Now, it may, it may well be that some woman listening to me now I think, this is not really fair, you know. Women are not like this. Uh, what about men? Surely men are involved as well. This is exactly true. Men are involved in trying to deceitfully lure away women and to break up relationships as equally women do. I thought it maybe was a bit of an extreme thing until I started to have a, a little bit of research through some other places and I've discovered through some of those networks in universities where they set up kind of groups, they, they have different names for them, chapters and different things where you can join a group and be part of that inner group. Well, one of these groups was giving advice for how to involve yourself or enjoy yourself on Valentine's Day and it was describing the difference between seduction and sort of attraction and seduction and I talked about using seduction as an absolutely uh, legitimate means to get what you want. So I kind of thought, this is maybe not so far away. And then when I think about the advertising, how people today are using uh, to sell their goods. Seduction. Perfumes are meant to seduce people, men and women. Clothes are meant to be seductive in the way they present the person to the other one. So that it's not really about attraction, it's more about seduction. And so this is not some sort of like fringe problem. This is front and central in our world today. And so it is well worth thinking about it. This word seduce is really uh, to try to take someone away by the use of your own body or your behavior to lead them into sexual in enticement. And I think that's what it's talking about here. But it seems clearly to give us a pattern of temptation, a pattern of temptation that we can think about, which is also general. Think about the, it begins with desire. That's what James chapter 1 says. All temptation begins with desire. Now, desires can be good. The desire to have an intimate relationship with someone is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. The Bible affirms it. The Bible, in fact, uses that very relationship as a picture of the relationship between Christ and his church. So it's a very high and holy desire. But then, of course, all desires can be corrupted. And that's what sin does. So we have desires. Then we have time and place. Interesting, if you're reading through then chapter 7, you'll see how the wise man gives his son this advice. He says, well, I was looking through the window of my house and I, I saw some naive young man and one in particular who lacked common sense, he was crossing the street near the house of the immoral woman, strolling down the path by her house. It was twilight in the evening as deep darkness fell. So he, he sets the scene for us very well. A young man, he's a bit naive, and here's a woman. It's the time of the evening, it's the place, he's walking by her house. All of those things set the scene, and immediately all of your red lights are flashing in your head, and you're saying, danger, danger. And then, of course, it moves on to deception. And deception is, is how she works. I mean, all that she's doing here, she's seductively dressed and sly of heart. She was the brash, rebellious type, it says, never content to stay at home. 
She threw her arms round him and she kissed him and with a brazen look she said, I've just made my peace offerings and fulfilled my vows. You're the one I was looking for. I came out for you and here you are. You see, the deception. I mean, we know when we read that, of course, most of that is not true. He just happened to be there and she sees him as a really good victim. The end result of all of this is so she, sedu- she, she seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. He followed her at once like an ox going to the slaughter and like a stag caught in the trap, awaiting the arrow that would pierce its heart. He was like a bird flying into the snare, little knowing that it would cost him his life. So the end is death, and isn't that what James says? James says that when desire has conceived and given birth to sin, and sin, when fully grown, brings forth death. We all know something of this powerful narrative, hopefully not as exactly it is in Proverbs 6 and 7. Well, maybe that is your experience, I don't know. But I praise God that he rescues men and women in places like this and he turns around their lives. And that's, of course, what Jesus speaks into this. He comes to the woman at the well, doesn't he? He comes to the woman caught in adultery and he reaches into their lives with love and grace and mercy. But in our culture today, we see a lot of this. And we think about those living in this culture and how many people say, oh, I wouldn't want to be a teenager growing up today because of the, tr- the pressures. Well, I think there's some amazing teenagers today, some wonderful young people, but I do know that it is not easy for them with the social media world and the, the access that they have through their iPhones and other things. The reality that we are seeking for here, and this is what lies behind, the reality we are seeking for here is never found in the breaking of the safe boundaries of God's will. What may seem as a restrictive thing is really protecting us for good. That's where the deception comes in. You see, to one person, the castle wall says safety and peace. To another one, it says prison. But wisdom and experience teach us that it really is a place of security. So when Jesus said that he came that we might have life and life to the full, he wasn't really joking. He really knows. You see, the freedom to enjoy these gifts spoken of in Proverbs 6 and 7, sexuality, intimacy, shared love, deep relationships, relaxation in a joyful environment, the excitement of emotions, inclusion in precious friendships, this freedom is only found in following the path of God's will for those things. That's honourable relationships, and pure relationships outside marriage, and grace-filled intimacy within marriage. Jesus speaks of life, and in this passage we know it says the end is death. Sin always leads to deaths, loss and pain in small ways along the road to final and eternal loss. And no one is too old to ever need to hear this word. No one is beyond deception. I mean, as you know what they say, there's no fool like an old fool, And if we think that we are beyond it, we have already been deceived. Because marriage is a picture of the gospel, the bride with her husband, the Lord Jesus Christ, I think that Satan has tried forever to destroy that picture in every way. Even now in the Western world, as governments are are legally trying to redefine marriage in our societies, I just see that as a way in which Satan has deceived people and trying to ruin this wonderful gospel picture. But we need to remember that it doesn't matter what the trends are going on around us, that the the scriptures guide us. The scriptures affirm what is right. So let's pray against the work of Satan, that he will fail in his attempts to do this, and that people will not be taken in. Governments may make laws. People don't need to make much heed to them in the sense that people don't need to embrace this in their hearts. I think we just have to pray against these things as well. But we also need to live our lives in such a way that we reflect this gospel love, that our relationships will be a display of the picture of the bride of Christ with her husband, the Lord Jesus. And also to pray for one another and for young people, and especially in these days whenever in, in the privacy of people's homes, there must be so many more temptations and so many more enticements and so many more deceptions. So let's really pray for God's grace and help in our lives as we seek to honour him as Jesus teaches us 
through the wisdom of his word. And the Lord bless you this day as you do that.